Hi guys, it's Hugo and welcome or welcome back to another video. Today is bookish advanced calendar day number 20 and today I'll be showing you my anticipated releases for January. First of all, sorry for my voice, I'm a little bit sick. Um, I've been coughing like all week, so I've been postponing this video for a while, but um, yeah, today is the day. Uh, I have around 19 releases I really want to touch about, from fantasy to thrillers to uh, other types of stories. So I'll have timestamps on the descriptions for the dates, uh, they are organized by dates, and I think we can start it right away, otherwise this is gonna be a very long video and even in the descriptions I'll be just show small parts and like the, the biggest, the smallest like idea what the book is about because I don't want to be like in a very long series of uh, talking a lot. So the first book <clears throat> I have here is Sky Ends by Mark G. Grangson and this is Pumped into a kill-to-be-killed competition where scrappy underdog well-bent on revenge must claw his own way up to the top in this thrilling YA debut. So, first of all, the cover is stunning with the serpent and things like that, so that is the first thing that grabbed me. Then, um, this is a YA fantasy, so it really depends on the genre. This is competition, so I believe Hunger Game vibes. Our main character, Conrad, lives with his murderer uncle and he's supposed to be the heir but he doesn't want that life. He lives as a low, so we have here some caste system. Uh, her, his mother is killed by a uh, gorgantuan, so it must be the monsters of the books. And he cuts a deal that to rescue his sister he's gonna enter in the 12th trades, a little bit like, uh, I believe, Divergent where they have like specialization so he goes to the hunter trade where he has to go hunt these gorgantuas and the final test yields riches and statues wherever ship ship crew kills the most gorgantua so he has this this is a, a series it says book one so I believe this is going to be have a continuation um, but it sounds very cool I really like the way of the cover um, Let's see with the YA how it will explore the world, but it's the just the cover is stunning, so it captured a lot of my intention of this high fantasy, you know. Um, I hope he has some magic system or something interesting to follow. We move to, I believe this is a middle grade, and it's The Curse of Hellgrass Bog by Mary Aveling. First of all, I love the cover. The cover is, it gives the vibes of fantasy, but cute. Uh, it, it's very cool. So this also comes out on Jan January the 2nd and dark secrets and natural magic abounds when 12, 12 year old girl ventures into the bog full of monsters to break a mysterious curse. So the main character Cass doesn't have a normal life. Um, she's uh, She lives in the, in the family's a natural history museum. She has a demon, has a pet. So then comes this girl um, Lilo comes to Cass asking for help to break the curse and the curse is lead us straight away to the, the center of Elagas Prost and everyone knows the bog is full of witches, demons and possibly worse but they are determined not to stop so it sounds a very good adventure and a very interesting story um, it's a middle grade, so I think it will be very easy to read. And yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting story, a very interesting adventure. And I'm I'm excited about this one because I think it will work very well as a middle grade. And I don't know if it's going to be a series or just a standalone, but even if it's just a standalone, a bit like a Coraline story, but with magic and curses, sounds really awesome. Now, I believe the next one is on everyone's radar and is Alison Schaff's new book, Fragile Enchantment. Uh, I read her first novel, Down Comes the Night, like years ago. I got it on NetGalley. I have a review here on the channel, like for a long time, still with a blue cover, which I really, really enjoy. But I, I really like that book. I read then the second one, A Firewall or Magic, although it was okay, it was not the best. But I, I'm still excited about the writing style because I know if she can conjure the story, it will be very interesting. This was, I believe, a fairy loot pick for January, which I'm not longer a subscriber. Um, so I saw the edition. I think it's like, I don't know, from the edition, I don't think it will be my style of book, but I'm still like, maybe pick the audiobook later. Let's see, so this is a YA Regency inspired romantic fantasy where a seamstress who is sent to dress the prince for his royal wedding and the scandal she weaves in her wake. The main character uses magic, there is an 
to let her stitch emotions and memories into fabric, the same magic that will eventually will kill her, so it comes with a cost. And that's very cool when we see that magic may have consequences and consequences to the person. I found that very interesting. So, when the main character, Neve, is commissioned to design the prince's wardrobe for the royal wedding, um, and she knows that will be important because she will be able to leave a legacy behind, although she will die eventually because of the magic. She starts to feel things for the prince, prince starts to think feels with her, you know, right woman sorry and that she will start to think, I do I want my recognition, do I want this love, will the curse leave me with this love? So I think it's gonna be like not the type of book I think down down comes the night was for me because it was a little bit of a different story um i think it's gonna be a lot more on the romance side which the other was more on the adventure and on the conspiracy side uh but let's see i'll wait for a little more reviews and then probably just pick the audiobook on the same day it comes a thriller and it's the first lie wins by ashley helston i've been missing thrillers a lot uh don't know what's coming up so this is good for me to get back on what has been released on thrillers so this is from the description a little bit confusing so we have our main character which his name is Evie, but she's not really Evie, she's there in a mission. She was given a name and an address by a mysterious boss, Mr. Smith. Uh, she learns everything and she has a target, which is Ryan Summer, which I believe will be like the boyfriend she has on this um, identity. You know, they, I think feelings will start to go there and then like she will go back to a real identity. I don't know, this sounds interesting. But at the same time, I'm a little bit confused how this is gonna process. Like, is she as an assassin? Is gonna be anything about that? It's just like I don't know because it has not very a lot of explanation. But it also is interesting enough for me to know start making plans on my mind. Like, what's gonna be about it? It's gonna follow her perspective, and it's gonna be like in the first chapters we're not gonna know anything about it, and we're gonna be like I cannot tell this, and I can't. and I think that will be annoying to me because like we know that because you said already in the description, so just give us the information. I hope I'm wrong, but let's see if uh, it's a good thriller. I'll give you my review if I read it. And uh, this is the cover, first of all, is stunning, and is The Gene Waits 100 Years by Shinonam Khan. And the blur says, Rebecca and House of the Spirits meet Fatima Farhan Midza in this sweeping, gorgeous, atmospheric novel about a ruined mansion by the sea, the djinn that haunts us, and the curious girl who unhearts tragedy and happens there a hundred years prior. So, you see the vibes. It's a very interesting, it's set on the south of the coast of the, the coast of South Africa, so it's a very interesting setting. Also, this mansion by the sea, um, I would think a more... Um, Autumn vibes also could be a uh, very um, winter because for me I don't have snow so for me winter is just cold and rain and things like that so I think it could be interesting also it's in Latin Africa so you may not have any any of that so I don't know but the vibe is interesting you know the gene and the girl the, what happened one under here prior so this is there's a mysterious death that happened in the house uh, the wife of the original owner um you know this is more a horror fantasy fiction you know it sounds really interesting it's a love story to all twisted beautifully one girl searching for belonging but also with horror so in mystery i think it's going to be interesting to see and if it has the right vibes if it has the right thing i think it's going to be a very great uh, great read now this i got an arc on it Gally, and it comes out on january 16 and it's so let them burn by camilla cole which is also a book that was targeted by that controversy on twitter about this author who negative bomb uh, by a by a pock author, so let's support this author. It says that with a whip smart and immersive, this Jamaican inspired fantasy follows a god blessed heroine who forced to choose between saving her, her sister or protecting her homeland. So we already have here some of a uh, duality. What are you gonna pick? The greater good or what is good for you, which is save your sister? So our main character, Pharaoh, channeled the, the, the powers of the god and we use the divine magic to save the island from these dragon riders from a Lingi Empire. So we already have dragon riders, which is very cool. I love dragons, so it comes very to a good start. 
and now she's all far up but she doesn't have anything to fight so you feel you know she feels that power but she doesn't have anything to do with it so she has to attend this international peace summit where she believes it will be just like uh like a train path you know she will she will just perform some tricks go home but then her older sister connects and forms a bond with an enemy dragon and the gods claim that to in order to break the bond she has to kill her sister so she starts to understand more and discover some secrets i think it's going to be a very interesting story it has already a very interesting setting of dragons plus god magic i think it's going to be a very great story i'm super excited i hope i can pick it in january my e arc um is definitely very high on my list because it sounds amazing and it's the cover is stunning and you know as uh, everything so now so perfect to work like in perfection with this on the same day january 16 comes up a thriller which is the search party by anna richel and this is a spellbinding lockroom mystery about a gripping trip gone horribly wrong when a powerful storm leaves a persistent strand and forced to confront local secrets and a shot team disappears so i believe this will be like a situation of one room one crime one scene you know like those agatha christie's um that it's or those books where it's just a room everyone is close there and they are gonna confront in this time i believe will be something from the past because this is like a shocking disappearance so com hold hell secret so maybe someone's sister disappear or brother and they and they know it's something there and they didn't tell so i think it's gonna be interesting uh, i think it, got, it could be very good and i'm pretty excited about it on the same day we have the city of laughter by tamin Fletcher. this is a fiction book so a rich and re and revisiting uh, a rich and reviving debut spanning four generations of East European Jewish woman bound by blood, half hidden secrets, and a fantastical visitation of a, a shapeshifter stranger over the course of one hundred years. An ambitious, delirious novel that entangles with queerness, spirituality, and generational science silence. City of Laughter announced Temit Frater as a, as a fresh and new and short literary voice. The tale of a young queer woman stuck in the thick of a generational secrets. The novel followed her back on to her family origins where ancestral crews begin to reveal a lineage both haunted and shaped by desire. So it sounds really interesting. I think it's going to be a very good start in Poland in the 80th centuries and then it goes to the present. I think it's going to be a very interesting story to to put and not only to a generational story and a general family story especially because if you have some sort of fantasy because they, they have this the shapeshifter um visitation so it's gonna be like some sort of present i don't know it sounds interesting the cover is interesting um it captured my attention now this is a book a lot uh by an author that is very famous and is the fury by alex michaelis so the author of the silent patient and the the maiden i believe it was how it's called the last one so this is a um, a masterful paced thriller about a, a reclusive ex-movie star and her famous friend whose spontaneous trip to a private greek island is up a, appended by death so this is a tale of murder and or maybe that's not quite true as it's hard is a love story isn't it so all of this opening like really captured my attention like it's it hate is it love it's love hate like and then it ends like but who i who am i my name is elliot chase and i'm gonna tell you a story unlike you ever heard so this is gonna be like a little bit like um the eight perfect murders maybe because what we are reading is he telling his story back until the present so if it's like that i really like those type of books where it's like the main character retelling the story until we reach the moment it's like yep we reach to this moment and it could be in the middle it could be in the end i don't have any preference if it's in the, in the middle i think uh before i go to sleep did it very well um i, I don't want to read any more of the other things because I believe will be like violence, death, um, murder, uh, who did it, and things like that. So it's and it's the setting of closeness, you know, one private island, one house. So I really like those type of thrillers. I think it could be if they are very well done and written. I think it could be very interesting. And yeah, this also comes out on January the sixteenth. So we move to the eighteenth, and I don't know. I feel like this is the Illumicrate pick for December, but. It comes out, at least on good, the good read that I have, it comes out on January the 18th. And is The Principles of the Moment by Esme Jimeki Pearson. 
um, which is book one of the Order of Order of the Legends, which is a sci-fi fantasy queer adult story. And I remember seeing this as the Illumicrate pick for December, at least from those Bookstagrammer Autumn uh, books, which I really love to follow because she always pick up the right book, so I know what I what I'm expecting. Uh, so. On this book is the main character, as Liv Asha, has lived her whole life in Granum, just like the rest of humanity, eking out an existence between factory, assembly, land, and constant terror. Then she discovers she has a sister imprisoned by the Emperor of Trashin, and is forced to make a choice, remain a slave or escape and risk everything in the name of the family. With the help of a hopeless time travel, Hobie, who just wants to return to a home London 1812 and his almost boyfriend George IV, Asha must travel through the stars in attempt to save her sister she never met yet vow to rescue and doing so save the world. So I'm ambiguous on this, like why saving the sister? You know, I think it, it, there is something here that is not explained and also, it's gonna have some queer uh, 18 London vibe I like that. Maybe that's book two. No, I don't believe it's going back in time, but uh, it sounds cool at least. And he has, if he has a pick, already gonna have one. So promising, promising. This I know is the January pick for Ill Illumicrate, and it's Voyage of the Dam by Frances White. It comes out on January the 18th, and I believe. I don't know why January seems to be the month of murder in one room. It has a team. It's I should know, I'm the booktuber of thrillers also, so I should have the memo saying January is gonna be the team for one murder, one room. Because I could make that work, but I need to know in advance. So, communication better, please. But, uh, so, Voyage of the Dam is uh, Concordia is maintaining peace between the providence to mark his incredible feat. The Emperor's ships embarks in a 12 day voyage to the sacred goddess mountain. Each grace with a unique and secret magical ability knows as blessing, so the 12 heirs of the Providence are there, except one, Ganymedes Prisco, class clown, slacker and all-around disappointment. When a beloved heir is murdered, everyone is a suspect, but they are stuck in the sea with a powerful people. Without a blessing to protect him, odds of survival are slim. So, but it just... One, he heir, right? So, he was that powerful? Like, do you really rely the other 11 to one person, like, that's dangerous. Let me just tell you. But it sounds really cool. I love the cover. The cover is just stunning. So, so yeah, I'm super excited for January. I also pick. We move. We move forward to January twenty twenty third, and this is twenty seven minutes by Ashley Tate. This in this stunning and propulsive debut, a town grieves at the loss of a young girl, but some fight to keep the truth about her death a secret. The question, the secret, the truth. So. Uh, for the last 10 years, I've been starting to understand my thing. Why did it take 27 minutes for Grant Dean to call for help on the, f on the fateful night of the car accident that took the life of his beloved sister Phoebe? If, she, if he had called, she would be still alive. The secret is that in the, in the, the, de the anniversary that he starts to remember that night, but he and Phoebe were not the only ones in that car. Becca was there and she knows what happened and she will do anything to help Grant keep his secret. Everyone remembers Phoebe but only June remembers the, the, the other person was lost on their night. Her brother Watt was missing 10 years and now June is alone, no family. So I believe this will be like some sort of situation like run over a person like I know what you did last summer and both are ended up dead or something like that or they were like together and they swear to keep a secret things like that I'm sorry didn't plot my head I my suspicion it's not gonna be like Chana like the next uh, big thing I have a feeling this is gonna be a little bit of a disappointment although the premise sounds good I don't know I think it's gonna be very predictable but I leave you here the the idea. If you want, tell me. Because if I pick it up, you know I'll have to rant. And I know you guys love a good rant. On, I believe, the same day, 23 of January, comes out another thriller called The Clinic by Kate Quinn. Uh, from the, the acclaimed author of Black Widows comes a setting set in the remote rehab highland on the coast of the Pacific North and West, which the death of a woman incites prompt her sister to enter the clinic as a patient in order to find the truth. 
So, this sounds very cool, like American Horror Story Season 2 vibes, like when Lana enters in the asylum to try to discover the truth. This sounds very much like it, like she enters the mental facility to discover the truth. Like, very interesting. And then, of course, she will try to have her mind, like, clean and things like that. So, sounds really cool. I will not, like say anything more about it because I think you get the idea. Rehab, sister dead, sister comes in to discover as a patient, so it's gonna be interesting. Interesting, interesting. On the same day, 23 is the day of the, of the thrillers. No One Can Know by Cat Alice Marshall. The author of What Lies in the Woods returns with a novel about three sisters, two mothers, and too many, si many secrets to count. So, Emma hasn't told a lot. Uh, um, hasn't told her husband about her past. He knows her parents are dead, and she hasn't spoken of sisters in years. Uh, when they lose their apartment, the husband, her husband, gets laid off, and Emma discovers she's pregnant. Right at the bank account, slips into the red. That's when Emma confesses that she has an, one more asset: her parents' house, which she owns jointly with her estranged sisters. They can sell it, but they can live with it. But. Returning home means that Emma forced to reveal the secrets to her husband, that the house is a, not a run-down farmhouse, but a stately mansion, and that parents stay there. They were murdered. So, I'm, I'm curious. Like, are you rich? And then you run. What did you do? You're my main suspect. Or, your sister's your main suspect, and you hide all of this? Were you abused? I have a lot of questions already, as you can see. So, it captivated me at this point. Let's find out. Um, I'll keep this on my radar because it sounds really, really cool. Now, I'm super excited about this one. You know how much I love theater. And it's going to be uh, a retelling of My Fair Brady by Brian D. Kennedy. So, My Fair Lady meets the classic She's All That in this charming and sweeney new rom-com author of The Little Bit Country, which I still have to read because it involves Dolly and I haven't read, but it's on my list. I think I have it on my Kindle. I have to check if I, I bought it on my kitchen because I think it wasn't in a good seller and I think I bought it. I have to check that. Not forget. Uh, but this is about, I believe, putting a play on. So Wade Wismore is used to be under the spotlight. So when he's passed over for the lead in the spring musical, it comes as a major blow, especially when the role goes to his ex-boyfriend Reese, who dump him for being too self-involved. Shy sophomore Elijah Brad is used to being overlooked, forgetting not know, forget not knowing his name. Most of his classmates doesn't know he exists. So when he's joined the stage crew musical, he seems to to destined to blend into the scenario. When the two have at uh, disaster's backstage rant ends, Elijah proposes an arrangement that could solve the both boys' problem. If Wade teaches Elijah how to be popular. Wade can prove that he cares about more than just himself. Seeing a chance to win Reese back, Wade divides heads first by helping Elijah becoming a new and improved Brady. Hmm, this is not gonna work, they will stop falling in love, but I like it. I really like it, and I love the cover. And if it involves theater, I love theater, so I'm super excited about this one. And this also comes out on January the 20th. Now, this I got an arc, also Net Gully, that's why it's here. It's called Diva, but that's a good win. You see, everything comes, has to do with me, right? Diva. So, this is a scandalous love affair between the most celebrated op opera singer of all time and one of the richest men in the world. So, this is a historical fiction romance about the story of Maria Callas and her relationship with Aristotle Onassis. Golden Age, uh, diva, opera, famous people, I, 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 I'm sold, you know? Um, uh, the heartbreak story of Maria Callas, I think it's gonna be, be interesting. I love reading about celebrities, not only biographies, but also like when it's like historical people who are already dead, like queens and things like that, in this type of way. I really love it, so I'm really excited about this one because it's up, up my alley. So if you like this type of book, here's my recommendation for you. We have only two left, and they all come out on the la the 30th of January. The first one is The Mayor of Maxwell Street by Ev sorry by Avery Cunningham. So, a debut novel that everyone will be talking about. Uh, it's an epic love story. It's a triumph, a tale of intrigue, racial tension, and class warfare set against the glorious greed backdrop of the 20 early Chicago. So, when a rich black debutant enlists the help of a low-level 
uh, speakeasy manager to identify the head of underground crime syndicate. The two are interested in the world of the prohibition era in Chicago. The year is 1921 and America is burning. So this is also it's a historical fiction romance which I'm really interested to, to read more about because sometimes I feel like I neglect a little bit those. But you know, about racial tensions, the prohibition era, 1920s, Chicago, like black stories, I think it's gonna be like very interesting. I don't know a lot about that time in America so it's definitely a way to learn a little bit more and I'm done with it. I think it's it's very cool uh, going to the underground and the mob and things like that so, so sounds really awesome. The last one I think uh, it's on a lot of people read there. I think it's very loot adult uh, pick and it's The City of Stardust by Georgia Summer. So a young woman descends into a seductive magical underworld of power angry scholars, freckled gods and monsters bent on revenge to break her family curse into the spellbinding contemporary fantasy debut. So I believe there is like this curse that comes to, to a family by generations and then when her mother uh, vanish um, it's Violet turn and Violet decides to break the curse. Um, so she goes to this world of power hungry scholars, you know monsters, gods um, and she will try to break the curse. You, you understand the idea. I think it's very explicit, so uh, it will be like this underground city, magical, you know. I think I think it could be interesting. Uh, it has still ro low ratings on. I th I would believe this will have a good net galley like count, but he hadn't. But um, it sounds interesting, so I'm captivating. I love the cover. The cover is just stunning. So uh, yeah. So guys, these were, are my January releases that I'm most excited about. Tell me in the comments which are the books that you are most excited about. I'm sorry for my voice. Uh, yeah, uh, if you reached this far, please consider to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Uh, we're almost at the end of my book, book mess, uh, my book issue then calendar. Only like three days left, so I'm super excited what it's going to bring. And yeah, I hope you guys are excited and I'll see you guys on my next video, okay? Bye.